Hey, welcome back to The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. Our first conversation will be about doctors and a strike in Nigeria. Members of the National Association of Resident Doctors will be going on a strike by 8 a.m. tomorrow if the federal government fails to meet their demands. The doctors had given the government up till today to do a number of things, which include the payment of all salary arrears, a review of the current hazard allowance of 50% of consolidated basic salaries, and the payment of the outstanding COVID-19 inducement allowance. This means there could be no doctor to treat you if you go to a government hospital tomorrow. We have the first national vice president of the National Association of Resident Doctors, Dr. Arome Adejo, joining us from Abuja. Good morning, Dr. Adejo. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Good morning to our viewers. Thanks for having me. Okay. We've been reading about the demands of NAD in the newspapers. Let's hear from the horse's mouth. What are the challenges you're currently facing and what do you want the government to do about it? Okay, good morning once again. Um, before I start, I must um, thank you for giving us the opportunity to let Nigerians see our own side of the story. And I must also so that, tell you that um, the morale among us doctors, and, um, among all health workers in this country, is, is at its lowest help. Um, I will start by saying that um, most of the things, if not all, that we are asking for has been there for time in a moral. In fact, some of them have been there before I started practicing. Some of them have been there before I came back to this country to try and contribute my quota to my father's land. Um, some of us, like me, we didn't train in this country, but because of the patriotism we have, we have to come down. I came back into this country in 2011, and up to now, most of the issues that we are asking for has remained the same. Now, um, the straw that broke the camel's back was um, for the fact that uh, the youngest cadre of doctors and other interns have not been paid for three months, some for four months. And we have been solicited. We have been begging. We are, we are practically on our knees every blessed day trying to let the government know that we don't want strike. When you go on strike, anybody can be a victim. I can be a patient now, and none of my colleagues is there to treat me. I remember I told them that last two months, I had an accident while coming from the East, and I was treated at a roadside hospital. If we are on strike, will I be, will I be treated? So nobody, no doctor is happy going on strike in this country. We are trained to have empathy. We are trained to be compassionate. So we cannot be happy going on strike. We have been pushed to our limit. And now we have to obey the Hippocratic oath that said, you have to take care of yourself. You have to look into your welfare so you can give the highest standard of care to your patients. Because a very hungry doctor, come on, man, it's a time bomb. You attend to many patients a day. In Nigeria, we have one to, to uh, more than 4,500 doctors. And it's more now because of the brain drain. Now you are making a doctor very hungry. The doctor who is the first point of call, is that not a time bomb? We cannot continue like this. We have to make a statement. All right. Um, and the truth is, yeah, what, if nothing is being done, I can assure you we are going on strike tomorrow morning. Well. Dr. Arame, let, let, let's, you know, go back. Um, one of the things that was uh, stated um, in the notice by the NARD, the thing called hazard allowance. I, I want you to share exactly what that is about. How much is it currently um, that doctors are, are paid for ha as hazard allowance? And also, it says that, you know, you want at least 50%, um, I believe, of um, consolidated basic allowance for all health workers to be the new hazard allowance. Tell us a little bit more about that. Thank you, sir. Um, the MA truth is, anytime I think about my hazard allowance, I feel like crying. I come to work, I am exposed to HIV, hepatitis B, Lassa fever, COVID-19, 
I go back home, place my kids, my innocent young kids at risk, my wife at risk, my parents at risk for 5,000 naira. 5,000 naira. And it's like that for every health worker. Now, if you said I have done a bad thing by studying medicine and coming back home to work, my kids have they done a bad thing by being the son of a doctor. My wife, she done a bad thing by marrying a doctor. If I get HIV now, I give it to her. If I get hepatitis B now, I give it to her. If I get coronavirus, I give it to her. For the, for the past one, one year, since the onset of COVID-19, we've lost about 17 of our members. 17, our hazard allowance still remains at 5,000 naira. 17 of only doctors would want to talk, talk of nurses, scientists, and other health workers that have died. And when you not think that the government officials hand 1.2 million as hardship allowance, what kind of hardship are they, are they, are they seeing? You sit under the AC, be blown by the AC, speaking grammar, they are paying you 1.2 million hardship allowance, and you tell me that I'm not being patriotic enough by demanding that you should at least be human enough to increase my hazard. See, if I, if I start to talk of hazard allowance, I might even break down here. So I think we should just jump it. You, you, hazard allowance that we are being paid yeah, but, uh, means that uh, uh, the share, government does not see us as being human. That yeah, go ahead. You know, still on this one. You know, I, I want your, your um, thoughts on hazard allowance for your colleagues who have left Nigeria, doctors who are working, working in diaspora. What, what's the difference like and what are the stories that they share with you concerning their hazard allowance in the UK and in other places compared to yours? Oh, all right. Um, thank you, sir. Now, um, it depends on the countries. Um, I prefer you even ask them personally, but I will tell you one thing. Okay. We seem to have lost them. I uh, hope that we can reconnect uh, with uh, Dr. Arume there. Uh, Arume Adejo is the first vice president of the National Association of Resident Doctors. Um, you know, and you know, I, I try to see this on a personal level, um, as a professional level. Um, I, I need to understand what their pain really is. And 5,000 Naira is shocking uh, to pay someone who puts you know, their life at such level shocking, of risk. Shockingly um, um, for, inadequate. Doctor um, welcome Ahmed. back. Hello, can you hear me, sir? Yes, yeah. we can. Welcome back. Yes. Go ahead. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I said it depends on the country. Some don't call it hazard. Some see it as incentives to the healthcare workers. So those in the UK see it as incentives. But I've heard that now they are trying to bring out a proper hazard for them. In some countries, like in other African countries, they pay more than $1,000. Some pay more, more than 500 naira. Sorry, $500. Some pay more than $1,000. In Nigeria, we have been giving 5,000 naira, 5,000 naira to every healthcare worker, okay. 5,000. And the government have told us that they are, they are going to review it. They keep on postponing the negotiation, postponing it, postponing it, postponing it, postponing it up till now, they are still postponing it. When they hear the, when they hear the threat of strike, they will call us back. They will start to talk. You sign MOU, you go back. They will not do anything. As for the MOU, okay. we cannot keep on in this cycle. D in doctor, the of this brain drain. So, so I will tell you one thing. One of the reasons why doctors are running away from this country is because of the welfare package. And hazard is part of the welfare. Hmm. So I was going to ask you, you know, you mentioned how it's, it's been. You know, there's a warning strike. They call you. They, had, they sign agreements. But they, they renege on that. Has the government rep, you know, made any attempt to negotiate tomorrow should be the day when the strike begins but as at now march 31st has there been any advances from the government to speak about this to negotiate yeah i'll be i'll, I'll be frank and i'll be fair to, to them there's been a lot of there have been a lot of advances now but the main truth is before even this strike this strike issue we have been um, talking with them, we have been pleading with them. And I'll be begging our members not to embark on strike because when you go on strike, you don't know who might fall victim. But the straw that broke the camel's back, as I said, 
was the fact that even in the midst of this poor working condition, in the midst of this inhuman treatment, the MDCN can comfortably look into our eyes and not pay our colleagues for three months plus, and they look at into our house and boast that they are working with quarter system. So that was the straw that broke the camel's back. And I will tell you one thing. At the point we are now, all doctors are ready to sit at home until almost all, if not all, our demands are met. Doctor, what, what's, so what's the challenge with the quota system? Court, without giving us the renew, the review hazard, without payment of every doctor, both residents of givenies and house of that have not been paid for three months, without bringing out the insurance, the death in service of our members who died, who we see as heroes, even if nobody sees them as heroes. Any negotiation that they want to bring forth without solving these issues is non and void. They shouldn't even bother. Uh, doctor, you, you mentioned that you know they've not paid your salary for three months and then they're mentioning quota system. I, I'm asking what the challenge is with that. Yeah, um, I was uh, one of those that stood up to speak in favor of the central placement of house officers. House officers are the lowest cadre of doctors, and they're always the first on call in any hospital that you go to. That means they are the first to be exposed to any risk factor. Now, their salary were moved from the hospital under the control of medical and dental council. The medical and data council showed gross inefficiency because prior to January, they should have prepared and make sure that there is a seamless transition. Initially, they blamed the chief executives of the hospital. We had a meeting, we pleaded with them, we begged them, and we had a resolution that within two weeks, this group of doctors will be paid. Lo and behold, the next day, the registrar, Dr. Sanusi, came out with a circular that went against all the resolution we reached in the National Assembly in front of the Sherman House Committee on South Matters, Dr. Kanko Tsununu. And that was what made our members agree. We have tried to placate them based on the resolution reached. And they've, and they've shielded their sword and bowed down to pressure for one minute Nigerians not to go on strike. For someone somewhere to come up and say, I will not pay you guys because the hospital exceeded the quota for employment of house officers. This quota that was set as far back as 2012. Did you see where we are always backward in this country? You are using something as far back as 2012 for 2021 in the health system where you're supposed to move with town. Come on, man. That was inhuman. That was inconsistent, and that was very mean on the part of the register of the medical and dental council. And if the presidency knows what they are doing, that man should not be there as at this point. He should be sacked or suspended. Because right. you cannot always blame the doctors for going on strike. Where after each strike, you don't sit down and look at who causes it. People cause this strike. And in fact, I can even tell you that people are happy. So people are happy if doctors go on strike. Maybe, maybe. They benefit. I don't know. So if the government is serious, after each threat of a strike, they should look into the cause of the strike and punish whoever is responsible. This will make the F sector move forward. You cannot come and Dr. Dejo. everything that will sat down hours to deliberate on just with one secular. All right, Dr. Dejo, th there's forward. also something called uh, payment of uh, debt in service insurance for all health workers who died as a result of COVID-19 infection. Um, and, of course, uh, it also says that none of your members has benefited from the life insurance scheme put in place by the federal government. Shed uh, a little more light on, on uh, those uh, two uh, uh, angles. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Now, um, death in service benefit to us is what we demand for our members that worked while in active service. And... So far, we have 17 members that pay the supreme price. That is members of, members of our association, not nurses, not other health workers, not consultants, that pay the supreme price of giving their life for the sake of other Nigerians. 
their families are suffering. In fact, if I see the kids of some of my mates that have died, every blessed day I pick my application and try to apply to leave this country. Because you cannot kill yourself for people that don't care about you. Doctors die trying to save others, and you cannot even pay their insurance. Their members are there with nothing. And once they die, you stop their salary immediately. They won't get salary the next month once they die. The children are there. Most of them are young men with young kids below five. How will these people survive? How will they survive? Some of them, the wives, because of the rigors of medical work, the wives have to leave their job to assist the husband to take care of other people. The wife is jobless. The children don't have food to eat. And death in service benefits, what we have been saying from time immemorial, what you have promised us since the past one year that you are going to resolve within one month. Come on, what, what, is, what is the average uh, monthly um, salary of a resident doctor? Sorry? What is the average monthly remuneration for a resident doctor in Nigeria? <laughs> of course, you expect me to answer this on here. You I mean, expect me. I won't, I, won't, I won't answer this on here. No, yeah, give, give, us a, give us an idea what, you know, the figures are like, you know, so, because you're demanding more, you're what? demanding higher um, um, hazard allowance. So give us an idea what the figures are like for resident doctors across Nigeria. What, what I'm going to tell you is this. Whatever I'm being paid is just a minute fraction of what I should be paid based on, based on global best practices. Yeah, but that is the truth. I will not come on air to tell you what I'm being paid. It's unprofessional of me. Oh, okay. Well, um, I, I guess we would uh, leave Thank that you. part out, out of it then. All right. So, um, Dr. Talking about the mass exodus of doctors in Nigeria and medical tourism, we know the president has just flown out of the country, you know, while uh, the NAD is about to embark on a strike. How does that make you feel as the first vice president of this organization? That while there are lots of competent doctors, you know, we're having medical tourism, you know, to the tune of billions and billions of naira every year. Is it that doctors in Nigeria are not competent enough to treat politicians like the president? Thank you very much. Well, I will say that the president has every right to go out, but why I feel bad is that whatever ailment he's having, the people that are treating him out there, our members that left this country as per brain drain. So whatever ailment he's having can be properly managed in this country. Now, I want to tell you something. I have had cause in more, my more than 11 years of medical class to attend to politicians who doubted my judgment. And when they travel abroad, one of them met one of my classmates and said, ah, this guy was one of the best in my class that year. And what he told you is what is wrong with you. He came back to me apologizing. So in essence, what I'm saying is that whatever element you have under favorable condition, doctors in Nigeria can manage it favorably with good outcome. Mm. If the government are claiming that they want to go and do MRI with air condition fanning them, they should provide a facility with MRI with air condition fanning them in our hospitals. The bad thing is this. If any politicians travel abroad for any ailment that politician is traveling for, more than one million Nigerians have that same ailment back home. So why not bring whatever you feel is lacking here? back home so that the other one million that have the same element like you would benefit. You are elected to take care of Nigerians. Why do you want to take care of only yourself if you feel that we are not giving you the best? But I can categorically tell you that nothing that they are going abroad for that we cannot do yet. They okay. are just wasting our taxpayers' money. So basically, doctors in That's Nigeria are undervalued and there is basically a death in healthcare infrastructure. That is why we have brain drain. You are undervalued, you are underpaid, and your life is being placed at risk with the minute amount that they are paying you based on global best practices. We are not asking you to pay us what you are paying others in UK. All you just need to do is to make conditions favorable. If you give me everything I need to work with, I'm unable to talk of my own welfare. But in a situation where 
with my mega salary, I still have to contribute to my patient's treatment because you see a patient that is about to die. And without 3,000 naira for his treatment, the patient will go. You have, you, have no, you have no choice but to contribute. And when you keep on doing that, at the end of the month, you end up spending 100,000 naira from your mega salary. And that's what we are saying. We, we, we are not only talking for ourselves. Provide insurance for every Nigerian. Favorable working insurance. Not the NHS we have. NHS we have is rubbish. Absolutely rubbish. All right. And, and, and what, that, what about the... the uh, way, I will be happy working here. Yeah, I, I mean, remember one of the things we mentioned earlier was uh, uh, life uh, insurance. But let's also talk about the support from the Nigerian Medical Association. Um, what you know, level of support you know, are you getting from them? And also, what happens from tomorrow? The strike is meant to you know, commence uh, tomorrow. Uh, what, how do you see this playing out? The MA truth is, the Nigerian Medical Association has given us 101% support because all our members are members of the Nigerian Medical Association. And what we are fighting for is for the betterment of the health of Nigerians for the betterment of doctor. A doctor who is happy means all the more than 4,500 patients he sees are happy. A health worker who is happy means every patient we come in contact with is happy. And I will tell you, on good authority, that if the house officer's payment are not up to date, the residents who are even going for for exam next month, and are paying over 500,000 naira for their exam from out of pocket payments. If their salaries for three to four months have not been paid, if, our, if the insurance, the debt and service benefit of our members who die heroically while serving this country are not paid, if the hazard allowance is not reviewed, nothing is stopping that strike, and nobody will tell us to come back. We will, in fact, we will even leave this for, Look, all of us are writing flab now. We've told them, go, go and write flab. So that if they do no work, no pay. You leave. Is there, go a, is there a possible? Go write, because we have, we have tried not to travel abroad because of our parents, because of our sisters, because of our kids who are still in this country. Because if I travel, who will treat my parents? Is there who a possibility of getting into another... Parents? Is there a possibility of getting into another agreement or signing another memorandum of understanding with the there government? There is no agreement. We don't want agreement. We want action. Do the action and we'll not go on the strike. Nobody will send an agreement again because agreement is, in fact, agreement is fraud now, say. It's fraudulent. We are not signing any agreement. Agreement that has been reached previously, respect it, man, or give commitment. You mustn't give 100%, but just give commitment that will make us look at our members and tell them that we have not failed them. And I want to apologize to Nigerians that you have to understand from our own angle, because we are not happy. So we cannot give the utmost best care. And Nigerians should be shouting, our hospitals should be well equipped. You cannot see a doctor walking in the world, sweating under the sun of Hamad, or under the sun of the weather, and somebody in, somewhere in the ministry sitting down in the medical and data council, sitting down under air condition throughout the whole day, making laws and, de and decisions that will affect me, that will affect the practice, and meanwhile, in extension, affect the health of Nigerians. And we are not saying anything. It's time we have to take the bull by the horn and tell okay. them the truth. Those responsible penalize them. Doctor, I, I wanted you to tell us a bit about some of the healthcare facilities or equipment that are very important, you know, to manage some certain, you know, diseases in the country, maybe like cancer, that are lacking in our public hospitals. Okay. Before we go into that, let me just give you a brief story. As, a, as an ask officer in Federal Medical Center, Lukuja, as far back as 2011, I had a patient who had a head injury. There was no CT scan. CT scan is what you get in, 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 uh, in the smallest of health centers, even in countries like Ghana and Liberia. There was no CT scan in the whole of Ogi State. Patients are referred to Abuja or to Ilori 
And when you get to Abuja, the National Hospital, they will tell you that the CT scan has broken down. Either you go to a private place that will charge you times 20, or you wait until they repair the CT scan. Most times, these patients die in transit, and, they are, and their dead bodies are returned back. Sometimes they come to Abuja, wait for the broken CT scan to be repaired, and they die. That is a true life story. And that's why some of us are depressed when you see this kind of thing. Now, X-ray machine should be in every functional general hospital. Ultrasound should be there. CT scan should be in, in any functional general hospital. MRI should be in any functional teaching hospital. Please, I will challenge you guys to go ahead. Go around the hospitals in this country. Count the number of MRI, not dead MRI, not cataracts, not what they have. What they have is what have been used for years that they ship back to Nigeria and it comes down here and break down. No, how many MRI in this hospital, in Nigeria hospital? I'm not sure there are more than two. Most times we refer our patients to private home facilities for MRI. And in, in most of these hospitals, in, in fact, out of that two, one out of that two is PPP. Can you, can you break down the, the meaning of, the of this? Um, doctor, for people who don't understand, you know, what, what MRI is, CT scan, can you help us break this down and what, what they're used for? Uh, MRI way? is magnetic resonance imaging. CT scan is cytotopograph. That is what you use for any patient with head trauma, any patient with head injury. And you know that accidents happen in our road always because of the bad road. By right, any patient presenting to you that is involved in an accident that has any element of head injury should be subjected to CT scan. And nine out of 10 cases in this country, we don't do the CT scan because we don't have it. All right. And so what does summary, how how does this leave our us, are doctor? Fully equipped, so 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 fully for for, for Nigerians beyond beyond the ultimate tragedy, which is death, the fact that we lack these equipment in our in our hospitals, what does this do for patients and especially for the morale of doctors who see these cases every day? I just told you that we are depressed. We are depressed. Some of us are depressed. That's why we hear the slogan. That the doctor will tell you, don't do this, but he does it. Because of depression. When you see that you can save the patient, but you cannot save the patient because of basic medical equipment, you get demoralized and you even want to leave this country. Because okay. I'll be very frank with you, man. An average Nigerian doctor goes into medicine out of passion. And when you have the passion, no matter the amount of money that is being paid to you, if you cannot impact on the life of your patient, you get demoralized and you get depressed and you want to run away. That right. is the um, So most of our members are demoralized and depressed. And that's why you are seeing the brain drain now. It's as bad as people leaving Nigeria to go to Liberia and work, to go to Ghana and work, to go to all sorts of countries that we thought in our mind that Nigeria is better than. Okay. okay. All right. Um... Dr. Um, Adeja, thank you very much for uh, sharing with us and for speaking with us this morning. Uh, we will, of course, uh, follow up with uh, events from tomorrow and, of course, uh, bring you back here on the program uh, if uh, necessary. Thanks once again. Thank you again. Have a great day. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. And you, too. All right. Ooh, that was um, such White, an uh, eye-opener, wasn't that? Yeah, I mean, yes, it, 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 these things are, you know, almost, you know, public knowledge. And, you know, a lot of people know that, you know, you know some of these um, um, aspects of, you know, the Nigerian life are lacking. Same thing with university lecturers, with primary school lecturers, you know, with the police, with healthcare and all of that, you know. And, um, you know, once again, it, it shows also a lack of trust in the government because that's why I asked him about the possibilities of another memorandum of understanding and another agreement and nobody even trusts uh, you know, these things, and when the Nigerian government signs an agreement with you, that they will actually uh, go through with that agreement. Um, I'm, you know, mostly, I've struggled with knowing why he, you know, why it's difficult to talk about remuneration, what their monetary remuneration is. Um, you know, online, it's everywhere, it's public knowledge, between 190 and 280,000 naira a month, you know, and what do you think a, a resident doctor should earn in Nigeria, basically? Mm -hmm.
All right. Well, that's it uh, for this issue. We'll, we'll uh, follow up and give you updates on if the strike eventually goes on or if the government calls doctors to the negotiation table. Uh, trust us to give you the updates here on The Breakfast. And we'll take a break here to discuss more topics after this.